Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, a ridiculous entitled rich neighbor destroyed both my family farmhouse and barn and claimed it was an accident. I showed him why you should never mess with a farmer. Here is what happened, let's dive right in. So I'm a home buddy and by that I mean that in my 30 years of living I have rarely traveled and if I have there is not much of a desire on my behalf to stay for longer than a few weeks. I like being at my childhood home, I find it peaceful and tranquil, it's a feeling that's hard to explain but I'm sure people will understand when I say I would just not rather be anywhere else. So my granddad is 80 and currently lives in a care home. When he was younger he won a bet and his winnings being a farm with a very large plot of land surrounding it. This was back when land was cheap anyway, there is a quaint farmhouse on the land positioned in the upper left corner of the main field. It's the closest thing other than the fence to our neighbor's plot of land. Him and my grandmother raised my mother in this farmhouse almost 55 years ago. And once my mom married my dad, they had some tricky financial issues and they moved back home and decided to raise me. My mom was pregnant at the time in the same home that she grew up in. I'm telling you all of this because I really want you to get and understand the sentiment this house has to me and my family. It has saved us countless times and the yields prove fruitful year after year. When my grandma died, my grandfather started to suffer mentally. And after a long year of debating what to do, my mother decided it would be best for him to move into a care home where they would be better able to aid him in his mourning. She was devastated and so my parents decided that with the money they had saved up, they would move close to where the home was. I was 25 at this point and we all realized that rather than selling the farmhouse, I might as well live in it as my first home. And I was thrilled. My whole life I loved the farm, even doing all of the gross jobs made me feel complete. It felt like my calling and both me and my parents knew I couldn't just give it up and move. I spent a year with little to no issues, the animals were all producing the right amount of produce and the fields the right amount of crops. However, then Mark moved in next door. The neighboring plot of land I have just touched upon has been up until this point unowned. Well, it was owned but not by anyone living there. Hey, cannot believe I'm finally seeing someone in this place. Have you just bought it? I asked as Mark opened his door. I was thrilled to finally have a neighbor. Mm-hmm, what do you need? He replied looking down his nose at me. Oh well, I just came over to say hello really. I responded trying not to let his snappy attitude falter my own upbeat one. Hi, he said and shut the door. I decided that maybe he just needed to warm up to me and did not really take much offense from the first encounter we had. A week after this conversation he came knocking. Got any spare eggs? He asked. Yeah sure, loads. My chickens overproduced by about three dozen. How many do you need? I was thrilled that he was making the effort to come over even if it was for something he needed. Three dozen should do, he responded. I went off to fetch the eggs that were in a basket out the back. Are you having trouble getting eggs from your chickens? I can pop over and see what's the issue if you want. I suggested as I knew he had chickens, they were just as loud as mine and they like to wake up at 3am. They are fine, he remarked and turned stomping away. I did not really think much of our conversation until later on in the day when I was about to drive down to the farmer's market but stopped when I saw my truck had been egged. I immediately jumped to the conclusion that my neighbor was the culprit but I had and still have no idea why he would do something like that. I also did not like confrontation so I didn't ever accuse him of the vandalism. Any more eggs? He asked the next day. Sorry, I don't have any spares today. Can I ask why you need so many? I was curious but also sure I knew. He just turned and walked off. The next few days I noticed moving vans pulling up. I guess his things are finally being brought here. I was shocked to see countless famous paintings and other expensive artifacts come from the back of the vans. And on some days, sports cars would pull up and be parked on the land. So now I knew why he acted like such a snob. Because he is one. No offense to anyone else who happens to be materially fortunate, just letting you know you're going to have to move your farmhouse. Four meters of it is on my property. He knocked around a week later to share this discovery. What? There's no way, I responded and he showed me his deeds. I then went and got my own and we both realized that he was indeed wrong. He did not admit it and walked away, grumpy 
happier than he was when he walked over. He started having construction done over the next few days, building who knows what. I came back from the farmer's market one afternoon and nearly crashed my car into my fence as I saw a bulldozer come hurtling towards my house and barn and smash right into both of them, one after the other. I let out a blood-curdling scream as I raced out of my car. I stared in shock horror at the scene. I did not even realize Mark had approached until I felt a hand on my shoulder. I'm terribly sorry, that was nothing but an accident, he drawled. I did not even hear him at the time, I was just so distraught. Thankfully, all of my animals were outside. Oh, and by the way, I got a property survey done, and as it turns out, I do own that area of land. But at least now you have a reason to build elsewhere. <laughs> I... What? I, I cannot just rebuild... I was still staring at the rubble. I cannot remember what else he said, as the next thing I knew, he handed me a hotel key telling me I could stay there until I figured out what to do. I was so dazed that I did not even consider how suspicious it was that he already had the key. Still in a daze, he drove me to that hotel, where I stayed doing nothing but sleeping and crying for the next two days. On the third day, I forced myself out of the depression and walked up back to the farm. And when I got there, I saw a team of people huddled over my rubble. And it all made sense. The oil reserve. There's a large oil reserve underneath my home. It has been there for, well, I guess forever. It was no accident. My neighbor just wanted the oil. My family would have harvested it ages ago if we could afford it, so I decided to wait. I decided to call the police and report everything. No, his property was encroaching on my own. This all belongs to me. Mark screeched as the police started asking him questions. They checked over our documents and declared that he was 100% incorrect and what he had done was a serious felony. Do you want to press charges? The officer asked me. I nodded and days later we were in court. Some interesting information has just been brought to my desk. This is not the first time that you have exploited an oil reserve that is not on your property, is it? The judge leered down at Mark as he sat with a bead of sweat glimmering on his forehead. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, it seems that there have been six other occurrences on record, all of which you managed to escape imprisonment as you were able to bail yourself out before even touching the grounds. This is defamation. You cannot be throwing such accusations at me, sir. Mark had stood at this point and his lawyer was fumbling with papers next to him. This is your official record, the judge remarked before he began going through set records for another few minutes while Mark and his lawyer tried to waffle their way out of the situation. Silence! As for the oil, this will of course remain in the custody of your neighbor. For the damages done to him, both physical and mental, you will be fined $500,000. Now for the continuous illegal exploitation of unowned oil. You will get 20 years in prison, your assets will be frozen with the majority going to your neighbor. What? You cannot do that. I will sue you. Mark screeched as the police put him in handcuffs. Sure you will. The judge simply rolled his eyes and watched as he was taken away. The assets I won from the case far outweighed the 500k and I was overly pleased. I was able to pay off my parents' debt completely, afford them a better house which was close to a more luxurious care home. And as it turns out, my neighbor would be in prison for much longer than the 20 years. While he was in there, an undercover cop portraying as another inmate got a full confession from him for several violent crimes and millions of dollars in tax evasion. It's safe to say his reputation was ruined and I got a little famous over media. I've never been one to care for the fame, but it did feel nice to know people had my back. And by the way, Ripe Stars, just so you know, the title story, the story you just heard, was machine translated from Spanish. Since I found it on a Spanish website, it was not from Reddit this time. So if any sentences seemed weird, that is because of the translation to English. Also, just in case you were wondering about the names and stuff, usually for stories, I randomize the names used just to make the stories more anonymous and not dox any of the people involved. Either way, the next one is titled Racist Karen calls the cops on my kids for using her dumpster and wants them arrested. So myself, my wife and my two kids have lived in our neighborhood for eight years. We first moved in when my eldest was born. The street is now not what you would consider nice, it's quite run down and about half of the houses don't have anyone living inside. We are also the only ethnic family on the street which has led to some tension in the past. For the duration of us living here, we have seen many people move in and move out not long after. So last year when our most recent neighbor moved in, her name was genuinely Karen, we thought nothing of it. A week after she had moved in, me and my wife went over to her house with a plate of cookies as a way to welcome her to the neighborhood. 
Get off my private property! Karen screeched once she opened the door and saw us there with the cookies. Ma'am, we just wanted to welcome you to the neighborhood. I had tried to calm her, assuming she had misjudged our intentions. Get away! I don't meddle with your kind! She ground out and as we were walking away she yelled, You can leave the cookies! As you can tell, we were already off to a bad start. For some reason, she just had a very sour impression of us. Not only was she clearly very rude, she was also inconsiderate. She would make so much noise at night as if she was constantly stomping around her house and moving furniture. She also owned two small chihuahuas that would bark constantly through the night. They seemed to only sleep in the day though. Although these things were fairly annoying, we brushed them to the side as it was not really worth kicking up a fuss over and shutting our windows usually drowned out most of the noise. It was not until she had been living next door for about a month that we had our next interaction with her. One of the chores I give my children is to take the trash out and put it in the big dumpster which leans against our house around the side. There's another one adjacent which belongs to Karen. One day, a couple of minutes after my kids had left the house to put the trash in the dumpster, I heard a loud knock on the door. Opening it, I saw Karen standing there with my two children standing behind her. Tell these vermin not to use my dumpster to throw away their trash! She yelled as if I was miles away before turning around and storming away. We did not that, promise, my elders told me and I of course believed him. I decided to let the situation go, assuming that Karen had not seen which dumpster they put the trash in and was simply once again misjudging the situation. Even still though, the following week when my children went out to take the trash, I came with them. Oi, what do you think you're doing? I heard from my neighbor's house and looked up to see Karen with her head stuck out of an upstairs window. Putting our garbage in our dumpster, I stated opening the lid and throwing it inside. She slammed the door shut and I could hear her running downstairs. That is not your dumpster, she screeched as she came bounding out of the house with nothing but a rope on. Well, it obviously is. Yours is the one leaning up against your house, so this one must be ours, I replied sighing. No, I own them both. She stated matter-of-factly. Sure you do, I muttered and started walking back to my house trying to usher my kids inside so they would not get scared. We simply left her to carry on pouting outside. The next week we managed to put the trash out without having the misfortune to run into our neighbor. However, the next morning when I woke up and saw my garden through the window, I realized we had not been so lucky. There was trash scattered all over the garden and when I mean all over, I mean in every little patch of grass and there was even a load of bottles in our pond. I went outside and took pictures of my garden just in case I needed the evidence before I began tidying it all up. After several hours I was finally finished and marched over to Karen's house to give her a piece of my mind. Words couldn't simply not explain how angry I was feeling. Why on earth did you do that? I demanded the moment her door began opening. I told you to stop using my dumpster, she stated before slamming the door in my face. I stood there for a moment trying to calm my now red hot temper and eventually went back inside my own home. For the next few weeks I heavily monitored my dumpster but luckily she had not decided to kick up another fuss about it. I still went out with my kids so they were not on their own, a few more weeks later and I decided that she must no longer care so I let my kids go out on their own again. After about 5 minutes of my kids leaving the house, I began to get a little suspicious and so decided to go see what was taking them so long. When they were not at the dumpster, I began to think the worst. The garbage bags they had taken with them had just been dumped on the floor which put me on even higher alert. I yelled their names in panic and that's when I heard screams coming from my neighbor's house. At the same time as I was running over to Karen's door, my wife came bursting out of our door to ask what was going on. I quickly explained as I began throwing my entire body at the door, now was not the time for polite knocking. I had no idea what she was doing to my kids and I was not gonna wait to find out. After one more shove, the door broke off its hinges and I was inside. I scanned around and then heard more muffled screams and followed the sounds, my wife not far behind. We eventually found them in a room upstairs. They were crouched in the corner of the room, looking beyond terrified. Karen was holding a wooden bat and was bashing it against a wall right above their heads. Stop that, I yelled as I made an attempt to grab the bat from her hands. I failed and she whirled around to stare at me with wide eyes, the bat raised above her head. You people just don't know when to stop. I told you to stop using my dumpster, but don't worry, the cops are on their way and then we will never ever have to see each other again. Her voice was slurred and I immediately knew she was on something. Barely moments after she had finished speaking, we all heard sirens and then the sound of footsteps charging up the stairs. 
I'm not sure how Karen had planned for this to pan out, but clearly, if she's the one holding a weapon and there's two scared children in the corner of her room, then it won't look good for her. Ma'am, put down the bat, an officer commanded. Officer, thank goodness you are here. These lowlifes have broken into my home and are trespassing on my property. I want them out. She whined, trying to sound innocent, which was hard when her voice was laced with substances. She kidnapped our children, we were not gonna sit back and wait for her to release them. I had no idea what she was doing to them. I responded, hoping the officers would understand our need to break in. The officers clearly believed us and motioned for us to step aside while they began inching closer to her. Hey, what are you doing? She yelled frantically as they grabbed her and handcuffed her. Me and my wife ran over to our kids and hugged them tight before we started following the officers downstairs and out of the house. You don't understand. They used my dumpster without permission. You need to arrest them. The children especially. That's why I called. I wanted you to arrest the kids who had used my dumpster and I needed to keep them inside so they couldn't run away. Karen waffled as they shoved her into the cop car. When she realized that she wasn't gonna win this one, she resorted to shouting racist insults through the window, causing me to cover my children's ears. I was hoping they wouldn't be exposed to such things until they were older, if ever. One of the officers called around to our house a few weeks later so we could iron out the details. I of course pressed charges and won $30,000 for emotional damages and for the vandalization of our garden with the rubbish. Karen got a 5 year sentence for abducting children and endangering them. Plus she got 300 hours of community service for the drug abuse and the best part of all of this is that the community service is litter picking. I guess the punishment really fits the crime. And the next one is a story from r slash am I the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for being a Karen? So my car was shaking when I braked from high speeds and my dad told me it was the rotors and I believed him, but the deal I got the car from has free diagnostics so I took it there. My dad was right, it was the rotors and my friend had just done the brake pads like a month ago, but not the rotors. So the dealer guy said it will be 650 bucks to get all four rotors shaved down and an oil change, synthetic oil, so the oil change is like 90 bucks itself and I said okay. He calls me like an hour later and says this guy started cutting the front rotors and it was not gonna work so they needed to replace all four for $850. I asked if they cut the backs once yet and he said no. I especially said don't cut the back ones, do as little as possible. He then calls me again and says his guy cut a back rotor and it was not gonna work so I needed to replace those two as it was too uneven now. I said I told you not to cut those and he was like, I was just trying to help you out. I'm fuming at this point and go to pick up my car. It's 750 bucks for the two front rotors and the oil change, when by the way they had quoted me 850 for all four and the oil change. So I pay and leave. My car is literally not drivable, it's so shaky, I bring it back and tell him the car is dangerous at this point and it needs to be fixed. We get into and he's like, I'll do the back rotors for free labor, but it's 200 for the rotors. I tell him I will get a lawyer because I'm not giving him literally another penny. I paid 750 50 for a car that is worse than before. I ask for the manager and eventually they agree that it was their screw up and they will eat the back rotors. Pick the car up the next day and it is good. I told my parents and they said they are proud of me, but my one friend said I was a Karen. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? And yeah, ripe stars, let me know what you think about this one in the comments. Do you think OP was the a-hole here or not? People on Reddit said, so you gave them a work order and then they tried to do work outside the order and you forced them to pay for basically vandalizing your car? Not the a-hole, but also not a Karen. You stood up for yourself when someone was trying to cheat you. I'm proud of you. Comment number two, not the a-hole, no way is this on you, the dealership thought they could screw you over and you stood up for yourself. Your friend is a moron. And yeah, ripe stars, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far, it can be pretty common for mechanic shops to do exactly this to women. Also, it seems like to me, but then again, I'm from Thailand, the price for doing all of this is incredibly overpriced, but maybe that's because OP went to a dealership instead of an independent shop or something. And then again, from my experience, usually only the front brakes need to be done, the back brakes don't do that much. The pads for those are tiny and don't really wear as fast as the front ones. And that $90 oil change also seems insane. They literally scammed OP for over 500 bucks, so OP is definitely not the Karen here. Also, the fact that they didn't fix it the first time is a sign that they didn't even test drive the vehicle after they supposedly did the fixes. In my opinion, if a mechanic works on your car and then claims an issue is fixed, they should do at least one test drive to verify what they have done. 
clearly that shop is rushing and cutting corners. And at least the person that did this or is responsible for this should not work there anymore. And with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.